uh, today we will be uh, discussing the second lecture uh, on charging and discharging of capacitors in fact uh, in all the dc accelerators the basic principle of these accelerator is based on charging and discharging of capacitors and therefore it is necessary that uh, we understand this aspect of uh, accelerators very well now uh, one of the thing which we have to know is that uh, how the capacitors are formed in dc accelerators and the basic equation which uh, governs these dc accelerators is uh, uh, voltage generated on the capacitor v uh, is uh, is given by the charge transferred to the capacitor divided by the uh, capacitance value of that capacitor so v is equal to q upon c and uh, depending upon the various geometries of the capacitors their values uh, can be calculated you can see here various geometries used for the capacitors here or the condensers and you can see that uh, first one is the uh, parallel plates different geometries for example you can have two plates they will also form uh, capacitor and there will be a certain value of capacitance if that one or it could be a, a spherical's there can be a sphere concentric sphere it can be surrounded by another sphere so this will also form an uh, capacitor third one is hemisphere that it is not full sphere but uh, there is a hemisphere and then it is surrounded by another hemisphere also in the case of van de graaff tandem accelerators which you see in a little while from now is that uh, this whole system is enclosed inside a pressure vessel and that acts like a second electrode uh, which is uh, so this becomes like uh, as if it is two plates but they are hemisphere another geometry which is possible and which is used for example in the case of tandem accelerators and pelotons is cylindrical so that means there is a high voltage terminal like this and this whole thing is put inside uh, a tank which is a continuous one so this center portion which is a high voltage terminal acts like a capacitor so these are various geometries which are used and the capacitor values which is capacitance they are different for different geometries in the case of cockcock walton we are directly using uh, capacitors and those capacitors are charged through diodes they can be charged through resistors also but ch uh, charging through diodes is uh, advantageous and that you will be in subsequent uh, uh, slides and these are some of the things which we have to understand before going to the accelerators so now you can see here this first one is a uh, cockrot walton and this is a picture of 1 million volt cockrot walton at tata institute of fundamental research which was set up in the uh, late 50s then there is a line diagram of van de graaff and you can see that the top portion is the uh, the uh, uh, high voltage terminal which here is the uh, hemisphere surrounded by a pressure vessel and that pressure vessel is used to increase the uh, increase the dielectric constant of the medium so it is filled up with the gas insulating gas so that this high voltage terminal can be raised to higher voltages as i mentioned in the last lecture 
that in the case of cockroach voltans which are open air type there the maximum voltage which could be raised to was about 1.25 to about 1.5 million volts that was because uh, it was a open air type and there was a corona formation or the breakdown of the voltage because of high gradients and the gas surrounding was at one atmosphere air which has a certain dielectric constant and that is why the voltage was leaking a sparking was taking place and we could not go to more than 1.5 million volt in the case of cockroach walton type of accelerator in the case of van de graaff accelerator the whole thing is enclosed in a pressure vessel which is the filled up with the insulating gas a mixture of nitrogen and carbon dioxide but later on a much improved gas like sf6 then that that is used to fill up this whole system and as a consequence of that in the case of van de graaff the voltage could be raised to about 10 million volts our later on uh, uh, there was a improvement and in the accelerator technology and going to the uh, pelletrons where the charging was done using pellet chain and all that and uh, voltage could be go, could be raised to the terminal to about up to 30 35 million volts the accelerators were designed for 35 million volts that was because the manufacturing uh, accuracies of the terminal uh, and of course the purities of sf6 and uh, the removal of sharp points uh, so these are some of the things so you can see here that uh, the first one is 1 million volt cockroach walton second is a line diagram of van de graaff accelerator then the third one on the upper half is a 2 million volt tandem accelerator this was also modified in the late 90s and early 2000 to a 6 million volt folded tandem ion accelerator and uh, with a 6 million volt as the terminal so it could be improved and one of the improvement was because of uh, the change of the insulating gas the nitrogen plus carbon dioxide season was replaced by sf6 gas and of course the improvement in the manufacturing technologies later on then we also had a 14 million volt pelleton accelerator that tfr and this could go even to 15 million volts and uh, these things will be discussed later on in some other lecture so basic principle which is important in the case of dc accelerators is that uh, the voltage is equal to q by c q is the charge transferred to the capacitor having a capacitance value of c and uh, so geometries may be different the capacitance value of the capacitor could be different and uh, they can be calculated very nicely and the kinetic energy which is uh, uh, of gained by seeing the voltage difference of v for a charge state of uh, n and total charge of q is given by uh, qv and uh, where uh, it can be given in mbv the energy if the voltage in million volts and charge is qv is the charge state no this is just like diagram for the comparison purpose and to demonstrate that how important is this equation that is v is equal to q by c so you can see here the first one is a cockroach walton and how the charging of the capacitor takes place here second one is a upper half of the van de graaff accelerator where only the high voltage terminal is shown and the third one is a two stage two stages either tandem or the pelleton 
and uh, the whole column section including the high voltage terminal is uh, shown to be enclosed in a pressure vessel. Now in all these uh, three cases which are the main accelerators uh, you can see that there is a there is a capacitor formed and geometries you can see in all the three cases are different. In the first case they are like parallel plates uh, is shown to be parallel plates. Second case uh, it is a combination of a cylinder up to for example uh, up to this place and then it is a, a hemisphere. Third case it is a concentric uh, cylindrical. So the capacitance values of these three cases will be different and they can be very nicely and very accurately calculated. Now so it is important in the DC accelerators to know that how this charging of the capacitors take place and that is the that one has to understand very well. As I mentioned earlier the energy gain is Q times V and V is the voltage difference. Q is the charge which is equal to N times E. Here the N is charge state and the kinetic energy will be N times V. V is the voltage. So this kinetic energy will be in MAV if V is in million volts. N is a charge state and E is the unit charge. Now uh, so I have uh, here uh, invoked a, another parameter which is charge state. So let me explain what is the meaning of charge state because that is so suppose we have a oxygen uh, oxygen atom and oxygen atom has eight electrons. Now if you remove all the eight electrons from the oxygen then it becomes a bare atom and we call it O8 plus that means all all the electrons have been removed and it becomes 8 plus positively charged ion now. And if you subject this uh, oxygen 8 plus to a voltage of 2 million volts, then the kinetic energy will be 8 into 2 is equal to 16 MeV. So you can see that in the case of heavy ions, the same voltage can lead to much higher energies. Had it been proton which can have only H1 plus the energy would have been only 2 MeV while for heavy ions where all the electrons can be removed the energy could be uh, much higher and this property of the ions heavy ions has been exploited in the case of tandem and peloton accelerators and that is why there the much higher kinetic energies are possible. Now I have said that uh, oxygen 8 plus means that all the 8 electrons have been removed here. That is the meaning of oxygen 8 plus. So it is a positively charged and it is a 8 plus charge. Now if you consider in a very simple case of H plus that means hydrogen has only one electron and uh, that only one electron can be removed because it has only one electron that means H plus means the only electron is available with hydrogen atom that has been removed and uh, if we add uh, then you will ask a question that can we add one electron to the hydrogen atom I think yes is it possible and that is what is required in the case of peloton or even tandem accelerator where the initially in the first half of the accelerator the negative ions are injected and accelerated. So if you add one electron instead of removing it to the neutral atom then it becomes H minus. H minus means that it is uh, one extra electron has been added to H atom. Similarly in the case of oxygen, suppose you have oxygen atom and you add one electron, you attach one electron, extra electron that will be called as a oxygen minus which means 
one electron extra electron has been added now if you take uh, how the configuration will look like and uh, now in the case of let's say hydrogen which has only one electron so it will be in the first cell which is s cell so it be configuration or orbital uh, configuration will be 1s1 because there is only one electron however if you remove that electron then it becomes h plus and the configuration will be 1s0 because there is no electron now but if you add one extra electron then it becomes 1s2 s orbital can have only two electrons so it will so suppose the uh, there is heavy ions uh, then the, you add uh, one more electron then it will go to the next orbital so this is how the orbital uh, configuration in the case of hydrogen will look like now coming back to charging and discharging which is responsible for voltage uh, generation in the case of dc accelerators so all the dc accelerators and i am going to talk about mainly for cocktrot walton wendy graf tandem and peloton they are all based on the voltage developed on the high voltage terminal and high voltage terminal is nothing but a like a capacitor and uh, we have to charge so we have to transfer the charge to that capacitor and according to that uh, equation which is given in the bottom v is equal to q by c the voltage will be generated so therefore it is very important that we should know well to calculate the value of uh, capacitance as well as how charging takes place how efficiently charging is done charge is transferred to this capacitor these things will define or determine the efficiency of the accelerator so if we take for example one capacitor and keep adding charge to this capacitor its potential will keep rising uh, according to the, that equation so we can say effectively suppose there is a capacitor and its voltage is about v therefore that means you have transferred q amount of charge to that so you can write that charge q is proportional to the voltage generated on that capacitor this effectively means that the q is equal to c into v then c is nothing but a constant of proportionality and is called capacitance of the capacitor so you will see that the basic equation in all these accelerators is v is equal to q by c this is a basic relation which we have to remember and how accurately we can determine q value q is charge and the calculate the c value the voltage determination will be that much accurate so let me now see that how the charging takes place you, if you know the all the parameters so let us take a very simple uh, simple uh, circuit which consists of a capacitor c capacitance value of c and there is a resistance uh, of value r and uh, we put a, uh, a battery with a electromagnetic force epsilon then if you close this uh, uh, close this circuit suppose i put a battery uh, i uh, put a key uh, in between and close that key then the circuit will be closed and the current will start flowing and charge uh, will be collected on the capacitor that means the energy will be stored so it effectively it will look like as if uh, it will look like as if, so this is let's say is resistance and this is a battery and i put a capacitor and i put a key here so as soon as i close this key that means it becomes like this it becomes like this then there is a current flowing 
Now, if you if you do that, here uh, epsilon is a EMF that is electromagnetic force of the voltage source. Now you can see that in this case of uh, cock trot walton kind of uh, multiplier, uh, which is shown above, and that so first one and the second one are similar. Uh, only details are given in the second one. The voltage is a basically a voltage multiplier, and it's a circuit where the charging of capacitors takes place in parallel and discharging them in series and that is how the voltage across the across the capacitors are are generated and if you if you connect a accelerating tube accelerating tube means basically a set of electrodes where the gradient is formed and that can be used for uh, acceleration of the charge particles here you can see that uh, I have used instead of resistance, uh, we have used here the diodes and there is a reason for that because the diode has a property that in one direction, in one direction the diode, you can see I will explain, diode normally in the beginning it was, uh, uh, it was always shown like this that there is an electrode here and there is a cathode so there is a current passing through this so this was earlier was a diode circuit diode uh, element but now uh, this was when the vacuum tube was used but today the diode is shown like this which is a solid state uh, device pn or now this has a property that if this is positive and this side is negative that means you have a, you connect the battery like this. Then there will be, there will be resistance here. Then it will start, current will start flowing in this one, if it is positive. Now in this configuration, if this is positive and this is negative, so that means when this is positive and this is negative, it is called forward, forward bias. And in forward wise, there will be current passing through that. Now, the if suppose I reverse it, that means either I make it negative and positive here. That means in that case, this will become negative and this will become positive. Then there will not be any current flowing in this circuit. And that time it will be called reverse wise. And this property is uh, reverse bias. And this property is very effectively used in generating the voltage in the case of uh, cockroach walton type of accelerator. Now you can see here that uh, in this, if you see the complete uh, circuit, this is one unit. And in the cockroach walton kind of thing, you can have several units. For example, here two units are shown that uh, uh, a one unit means two capacitors and two diodes. They form the one. Uh, so here you can see that we are having four capacitors and four diodes. So there are two units. In this case also, in this case you can see there are two diodes and two capacitors. So it's a one unit. It is a multiplier. And when there is a here, the transformer here, which gives the voltage at the output, uh, which is V sin omega t. Let's say sinusoidal wave is given and uh, like this. Okay, uh, so you can see that when this is positive, then this will not uh, conduct. It will be in reverse bias. But let's say this is negative and this is positive. Although it is grounded, but uh, so when this is negative and this is positive, that means it is ground, so this is negative, then this diode will be in forward direction and there will be current flowing in this circuit. So as a consequence of that, uh, it will be forward biased 
and there will be charging taking place of this capacitor and the voltage will be generated across this capacitor to a maximum of this sinusoidal wave that means if it is v sin omega t then v will be generated now in the in the reverse direction that means when the sinusoidal wave goes to the negative cycle then this will not be conducting because then this will be negative and this will be positive so this will not be conducting but in the first half which is a negative half is already the voltage across this first capacitor is generated to a maximum value of v now when the uh, if we go to the other half that means this is positive and this is negative this will not conduct so there will not be any current in this one but this will have this diode will start conducting so that means this is negative and this is positive so this will conduct and then this will be charged to 2v because this is one this is already charged to v and there will be addition of v sin omega uh, sin omega t and the uh, peak value is v so this second one is charged to 2v so this is how it is generated same thing you can see here that when this is ground and this is negative a is negative here then the charging of this capacitor will take place through this circuit that is nicely explained in another transparency also and uh, when reverse takes place then this will charge through this capacitor so this will be charged to twice so you can see that if you if you have n number of stages and each stage minded is having uh, two capacitors and two diodes so if suppose you are having n number of units n number of stages and then the total voltage at the output here on the top will be 2 times n into v n is the number of stages but if when it is connected to a accelerating tube there will always be a current flowing this so the total voltage will be slightly reduced due to loading in the iron current which is passing through the accelerating tube